Welcome back, my lambs, to Hump Day Horror. It's Hollow Cocoon. We're back. We just... I mean, we're, we're ready to go to the well room. I'm recording this the same day as the other episode. Mostly because... So I don't forget a bunch of stuff that just happened. Uh, which isn't great for finding stuff. So we can just get... We just dive right into it. You know what? I'm digging it. I'm digging the game. Button. So my episodes aren't four hours long. I'm uh, breaking it up into two pieces. All right, here we go. I want it in that one. I want it in that one. I know. I know. I know you need to. All right, let's get to the new section, it looks like. All right, new section. New section, new me. What do we got here? All right. Miyayama Mansion Outhouse. I mean, I guess an outer house, not really an outhouse. Well, we're going to stare at this map for a bit while I go get a coffee, because that's what I need right now. Should have got one before I started the recording, but you know what? That's what we do here on Hump Day Horror. There's no editing. There's no forethought. It's just sometimes you got to get coffee. coffee cup is full. The horror is pending. Let us get going. And zoom in. Ooh. Okay, so we're in the entrance. There's a drenched tatami room. Oh, detached. It's not drenched. Uh, we got dressing rooms. We got a and more toilets to put our hands in. That's pretty cool. Kidney's room. Ano's room. Courtyard. Okay, this is a much smaller area. Which doesn't bode too well for what is up. This is a box we can hide in. Okay. It's locked. We can hide in here. We'll remember that. For when she jumps at us. We got a save point. We will use the save point to save the game. Whew, 10 yen. All right. It's a checker tray with an old man oh, with old man written on it. Okay, old man checker board. What on earth? Old picture two. Doctor Yahai Shimamura's journal, December twenty third, nineteen twenty nine. I was awakened in the middle of the night by someone pounding on my door. I went out to see a panicked servant of the Miyama family. Miss Ayano, who has been missing since she ventured into the mountains, has returned. I couldn't believe my ears. Despite my disbelief, I trudged through the snow and arrived at the Miyama mansion. My medical supplies in hand. Miss Ayano was learning, uh, leaning against her sister, Miss Kinu. They were seated in the tatami mat, on a tatami mat. Tatami mat? Tatami mat? I don't know. I think it's tatami. Miss Ayano was just sitting here, barely uh, staring blankly. I was concerned about her mental and physical state. Upon inspecting her, there wasn't a scratch on her. It was difficult to fathom how she spent a month in the cold, frigid mountains unharmed. Then a rather unsettling sensation washed over me. There is nine pages of this. All right, let's go. January 24th, 1930. A month has passed since Miss Ayano's return. She still doesn't speak uh, and spends all day in her room, staring into space. Whenever someone tries to talk, she only glances at them. However, when Miss Kinu is by her side, she seems to be happy. She leans against her with a smile. There are two sisters who lost their mother as a child. They must be like two halves of a whole. Lord Kayobe men Kayube mentioned uh, she's a timid girl. I am not surprised she does not want to speak after that. But there seems to be something amiss. 
She drinks water like she's about to die of dehydration. She hasn't eaten nor slept since her return. Furthermore, she doesn't even need to go to the bathroom. Okay, good stuff. April 21st, 1930. A cherry blo uh, the cherry blossoms are in full bloom. Miss Ayano remains sheltered in her dark room. When, she last t uh, when did she last touch sunlight? Yesterday, Lord Kaebe opened the door to her room, intended to show Miss Ayanto the cherry blossoms. However, as soon as the sunlight poured in, something terrifying happened. Miss Ayanto let out a piercing scream and uh, crumpled to the floor. It sent shivers down my spine. Her skin appeared inflamed as if she had suffered a severe sunburn. Beneath the damaged skin, I could see her raw, reddened flesh. August 31st, 1930. Miss Ando keeps losing weight, but somehow growing taller. Or perhaps it would be more accurate to say that her limbs are becoming elongated. She used to be petite, but now she's taller than I am. Furthermore, no matter what injuries she sustains, they miraculously heal within a matter of days. Her burns from the other day are completely healed. Not a single scar remaining, yet. There's something even more chilling in this transformation. There are mentions that Miss Ayano stares at me. Uh, there are moments when Miss Ayano stares at me. Her, sh uh, her sunken, hollow eyes glare at me as if they were a predator, and I was her prey. November 12, 1930. My worst fears have come true. Lord Kayabe has secluded Miss Ayano. She is in total isolation. Miss Kinu is burdened with the sole responsibility of caring for her. And then, tragedy struck. Miss Ayano bit a f uh, f wait, bit and fatally wounded one of the servants. Oh, damn. She ate her. That night, I told Lord Kayabe that there is nothing I could do. He pleaded with me, please. Do not abandon Ayano. I couldn't stand hearing such anguish in the eyes of a dear friend. It felt as if my heart would tear in two. November 13th, 1930. I found myself foraging Miss Ayano's... Uh, uh, foraging. Foraging? Foraging. Foraging. I scrounged around the... No. Okay. He's, he's faking it. Miss Ayano's death certificate. A doctor should never do this. Never do this, guys, but I'm going to do it. But for the sake of my friend, I had to. To conceal the murder. We used the body of a servant as a decoy. This is how we faked Miss Ayano's death. It was the only way to protect her from the public. Lord Kaebe and I decided to confine her to the dungeon connected to the hidden passage. Goddamn. I don't believe this one second. April 1st. 1933. This is the fourth spring since Miss Ayano's return. She remains imprisoned within those walls. She survives by consuming the blood of chickens, cows, and sometimes even humans. Her once beautiful figure is no more. She is a mere shadow of her former self. Her nose has been reduced and her left eye is punctured. In its place, multiple insect-like eyes have emerged. Upon her pale back, a pattern resembling markings found on a silkworm has taken form. Nowadays, unless accompanied by Miss Kinu, I dare not approach Ayano. Should I venture in alone, she would undoubtedly tear me apart. February 11th, 1936. Miss Kino, oh, Miss Kino told me sometimes my sister experiences stomach cramps. I conducted an examination and noticed a uh, movement within her abdomen. Ever since Miss Ayano's return... I had noticed a gradual swelling of her abdomen. Uh, initially, I attributed this to uh, this to ascites caused by malnutrition. But to my shock, it appears she is pregnant. If she is indeed pregnant, she has been so for six years. All right, December twenty third, nineteen thirty eight. Nine years have passed since that fateful day. How much longer can I maintain my sanity? My dear friend Kyobe has vanished without a trace. Tonight, aided by Miss Kinu, we will extract the child from Miss Ayano's stomach. Her body has undergone too many transformations over the past nine years. She's incapable of giving birth. We have no alternate, uh, no alternative but to surgically open her abdomen and remove the child. A cesarean section. My body trembles in fear. I wonder if the child bear any semblance to a, of a human. In truth. 
Uh, the truth is, it will not be born of a human. Okay. She made silkworms. Little silkies. All right, little silkworms. Very good. What do you got in here? Hell yeah. All right, let's try it. Look at that. Oop. Maybe like that much? No. Uh, ugh. There we go. Like this much? Oh my god. There we go. Oh my. Come on. Ten yen. Ten yen, why you do this? I hate that. All right, well, thanks, Henny Game. We got here. All right, dresser locked. There's a peony depicted here. I don't see any mirrors. Okay. Story of the trick box. Father gave us a trick box. He said, it's a rare toy. He told us that it was a box that would only open when turned in a specific order. Anna was worried about forgetting the sequence, so we created a secret story together to remember it. Once upon a time, there lived a nice old man. He found a mysterious bow in the mountains. Inside the boat, there was a princess. Hey. Okay. Old man. All right, you know what? This is some pen and paper gaming happening here right now. Uh, we're going to use pen and paper to write down old man boat princess disease silkworm cocoon. Old man boat princess disease. Silkworm. Thank you. All right. Very nice. But let's let's hear the story. Why not? Once upon a time, there lived a nice old man. He found a mysterious boat in the mountains. Inside the boat, there was a princess. The old man carried uh, cared for the princess, but she was caught by a disease and passed away. The princess's body turned into a pure white silkworm. The silkworm continued to spin its thread until it became a large cocoon. Nice. All right. Uh, locked. There's a mountain grapes depicted here. Okay, we got some of that. Very good. We're in the sister's room now. Yeah, yeah. Yep. There's a courtyard. Quite the small area. This. Oh, I probably shouldn't have went here. Oh. Yeah, let's, uh... Yeah, so the hidden passage there. That's kind of fun. What do we got here? Ooh. Old picture three. Let's go 
We don't have a key for that. This is a hiding spot. The map. So that's the attached room. We've been to the dressing. Have we been to the dressing room? I think that's where we were not too long ago. Oh yeah, we'll save. We'll save this. Let's go. Let's save. Hell yeah. Map. Yeah, we're in the dressing room now. I gotcha. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's go through the, uh... Let's go through that horrible... Ooh. One mirror? Mountain Gate mirror? Anything else out here? Ten yen? Hell yeah. For us to fail at the uh, ten yen game. I'm not good at the ten yen game. Not only am I not good at the ten yen game, I will never be good at the ten yen game. Alright, well. Okay. Key News Journal 2. September 23rd, 1968. Ri has died. Wait, what? E.G. informed me that she threw herself into the railroad tracks uh, two evenings ago. I knew this would happen. There was no way we, was, uh, who bore such a striking resemblance to my frail sister, could bear it. There's no way she could. On that day, we came to me alone. She was all dressed up, not unlike my sister would be. My feelings of disdain came rushing back. She was a bidding image of Ayano, but I both loved and despised. Yi is a mere uh, imitation of her. Well, that's, that's a dick thing. Yi has some, uh, has the same face, same voice as my sister. Why do you hate me? She asked. Since she wanted to know so badly, I escorted her to the dungeon and showed her the truth. You are not my child, nor are you Seiji's. You were cut from the womb of that abomination. Oh, shit. It is in the nature of a monster to crave, uh, to crave blood. Out of pity, Seiichi lied to you and said your bloodlust was from him. For many years, against his will, uh, he had to choke down blood alongside you. A monster's child. That's kind of crazy, actually. Finally seeing the truth, Yui, uh, Yui turned speechless. She didn't scream. She didn't cry. She just stood there. I don't know what Yui did thereafter. I do not care about what happened to her. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, a monster too. What do we got here? Okay, trick box. Uh, six sides. Words old man cocoon boat princess disease and silkworm. It makes the sound when shaken as if something's inside. Where do I use the trick box? Uh, how do I use it? How do I use the trick box? I know, I know how to do the trick box. How do I open? Uh, oh. I understand. I just need to find the right spot. Which is... Right here, to save. Very good. And then, turn off the flashlight. Let's play some checkers. All right, old man. Nope, old man. Boat. Princess. Disease. Silkworm. Hell yeah. Golden key. Where? Oh. Duh. First things first. Save this lovely game. Yes, please. Thank you. Look at that. It's a mirror. An old copper mirror. Has a... Peony? It's probably some kind of flower that I've never heard of in my entire life, but exists. Alright, let's uh, do this and then get ready to hide, I'm sure. 
So we're gonna have a nice, lovely silkworm lady coming for a booty after this one. All right, Ayano's Journal, November twenty first, nineteen twenty nine. Kinu looks sad and resentful. She said, "Ayano, you are like a butterfly." This left me speechless. All I could do was hold back my tears. It pains me to see Kinu suffer. Because of me. All I want for Kinu is to be happy. But I am not a butterfly. I am more like a silkworm. I was given a mulberry tree in a warm silkworm room. I never needed to leave and always had some care, uh, someone care for me. My body dissolves within the cocoon. I dream without ever being able to fly. I'm merely clinging to life. But as long as Kinu is by my side, I'm content. Considering Kinu's feelings, maybe it's better. I leave this silkworm room. If I disappear, Kinu could be with Saichi. Yet, I can't bring myself to leave. My marriage with Saichi is approaching, and there and the more I realize how little time I have left, the more I cherish my time with Kinu. I know what happens to Silkworms once they leave the Silkworm room. That's what that is what I am afraid of. If it were up to me, I would remain by her side forever. Okay. Cranky. Uh, I don't think we need a crane key right now. Where, where would we use a crane key? Hatched. Okay. Don't know. There's no cranes in here. So let's, uh... Let's get the hell out of here, shall we? All right, crane lock? A crane. Yeah. Imagine having all those keys. Well, this place sucks. All right, well. Ayano's, uh, Ayano's scribblings. Kinu abandoned me. Kinu was crying. Kinu hates me and loves Saichi. I don't want Kinu to cry. I want death. She is too pure. I cry and she hugs me. She shoots, threads, and we form cocoons together. What? In the cocoon, we dissolve and merge together as one. I am being lost. I stop being me. I forget many things. Her memories replace mine. She keeps eating me. I so thirsty. Give me water. Blood red water. Who old man outside stand in there? <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. Who old man sat outside standing there? Ayano? He cries. Who is Ayano? I think it me. Old man enter cell. He stroked my head and cried. Kinu laughed and said, Bon appetit. What? I mean, I guess it's food wars now. Kinu gives me tasty water. She calls me with gentle voice. I happy, Kinu is precious. Save me, save me. I'm scared, I'm scared. I forget Kinu. She ate almost all of me. Who am I? Where do I begin? Please no eat memories of Kinu. Before I forget Kinu, kill me. All right, well. Well, ma'am, how kill you? Oh, I 
to crouch through. Well, this sucks. Kind of hate this. Uh, well, let's get some of that. What's in the book? Kidu's will. Oh, we got some sad music again. All right, well. Ah, got to drink the coffee before we uh, go. <clears throat> Ayano was constantly vomiting blood. She has since stopped moving. She drank the blood I had prepared for her, knowing I had poisoned it. I had no other choice. I was sick and dying. Soon, I will be sleeping with the fishies. My frail arms were withered like a dead tree branch. This was the only thing I could do. Once I'm gone, who will care for my sister? Who will bathe her? Trim her nails, brush her hair every day. How will society treat her? They will look at her with fear and morbid curiosity and call her a crazy monster. She'll be treated as a subhuman. I cannot subject my, subject my sister to this fate. My greatest fear was forgetting my sister. My sickness grows and my memories are fading. Each night, I lay down with an unbearable headache. The anxiety crushes my soul. The nagging questions of it, I will. What? The nag. Uh, the anxiety question my soul. The nagging questions of it, I will even remember. If I will even remember her the next morning. God damn. Well, wouldn't be one of my playthroughs if I didn't butcher every sentence I try and read. I killed everyone. My father, Saichi, Yui, even my sister. I was left alone with the noose. I am dying in pain. I apologize. I know my sister, I know how my sister really felt, but I treated her poorly out of envy. Despite knowing how vile it was, I admired everything about her. This is why I despised her. My sister was the only one who truly understood me. Despite knowing how cruel and merciless I could be, yet still, Ayano cared for me more than anyone else. When the sun set, she would light up the house for me. She did so to prevent me from falling. My eyes and legs are old and weak. She was always gently massage my wrinkles. Oh, that's, that's cute. Cold hands. Yeah. I'm sure she does have cold hands. She was left out in the, out in the winter. Her mind is almost completely void of memories, yet she never forgot about me. That is enough. We found happiness in our own way. We knew all things came to an end. Forgive me, as this was the only way to save my sister. I do not know what happened to her on that day. I do not know who the she writes about is. But I like her. Also, I wish to dissolve in a cocoon and become one with my sister. Let's see how I fight this boss fight. Don't throw me. Oh, I see. Am I trying to bait her into doing it? Okay. Oh, 
Okay. I'm confused, but I mean, I'm, I'm trying. Okay, well, what the hell's going on? How do I... <laughs> uh... Alright. Well, we'll see. Go for it. Yep. Yeah. This one too? Try and get her to jump over. Come on, jump. Oh, she missed it? Come on. Uh, we'll, we'll hold off. Ah, uh, don't hit me. Still weakened? Come on! Nope! Not what I wanted to do. Come on, jump! Okay! Oh, I'm good. I'm good. Oh, just in case she did break it, sure. But what do I... I have to get that last one, I guess? All right, come on. Got her, but now I'm kind of trapped in the uh, trapped in the bad place for a while. Did I get her? Okay. Stomp her out. Use the rock. There's no way. We, we, yeah, we gotta kill her. That's a good ending. She's a bloodthirsty monster. We should 
There's no way out. We read all the lore. All right, one year later, what do we got? Back to the old family grave site. I thought this place was getting destroyed for a dam. あやのさんのことは誰にも父さんにすら話してない。あなたに毒を飲まされても死ねなかったあやのさんはあなたを縄から降ろして助けようとしたんだ。キヌさんを抱いて玄関先まで運んだんだろう。あやのさんは最後まで
impossible to uh, keep the loop going, but you are a uh... question mark. What is that? What does that mean? They don't know what they did? They're part of the team, but they didn't know what the hell they were doing? I, I don't understand what that one was. Okay, well. Yumi Suzuha? You did a good job with the music. I did like the emotional music when you started reading emotional diaries. That was kind of fun. Seems like a pretty small team worked on this for the most part. Which, you know, I dig that. I like a good indie game. Uh, this one felt pretty concise, fun. I had fun time. Uh, I gotta put my hands in two toilets, and uh, you don't get to do that in a lot of um, a lot of games. So. I like that. All right, we got some special thanks going on. Nice. Yuta Studio, good job. I liked Hollow Cocoon. I thought it was fun. I thought it was. I thought it was fun. I don't. I don't know what else to say. The puzzles were cool. Very like. Uh... Oh, we got bonus content. Unlocked the shop and bonus content. You can ask this for the main menu. Uh, bonus content also is okay. I will not be playing on Nightmare. I could barely play on normal. All right, well, I mean, while we're here, we're going to see what bonus content means. Okay. Uh, you can use items purchased at the shop to customize your enemy's appearance, uh, voices, and more. Customization did not impact the game progression any ending. Uh, okay. What? Head? What's this? Okay. We can change colors. Oh, we can't do anything because we... was the shop? Okay. Shop, you can exchange winning tickets. Uh, for points, you can use to purchase items. Available items varies. Okay. Winning tickets, white, red. Okay. We got six points. I could... <laughs> there we go. That's nice. Uh, okay, we got... Yeah. Ugh. We could put glasses on her. Perfect. Uh, <laughs> okay, this is kind of fun. Little alien antennas, eye patch. We got a pirate lady. I see. So, so winning, winning the. Come on. Okay, have vo we could have the, the sound like a. Vo oh, hold on. No. Can I? Can I preview? Okay. Change. Uh, the chase. Okay. What are the expensive stuff? Infinite yen. Oh, infinite ten yen. Infinite hat half prevents aliens from reading your mind. What? An old iron key that has a tag, a crest of a butterfly. Key is an item for an extra ending. Ah, so you can get, like, different endings if you get, like... So the butterfly key was a room that we never got into. Well, that's kind of cool. Well, that's fun. Uh, thanks for joining me. Thanks for coming by on Hump Day Horror. We'll play a different horror game for the next Hump Day Horror, as that's what I'm going to do every Wednesday. You can come onto this beautiful YouTube channel. You can like, you can comment, you can subscribe, you can hang around if you like this. If you like me going out of my way to get a coffee when I'm supposed to be recording, you can uh, do that too. That's good. Thanks for joining me. Appreciate y'all. Have a great day. Catch you in the next one. Bye for now.